in this lecture we are going to discuss about torsion its derivation and uh, the power transmitted by shaft its strength and the related things so first of all we will discuss what is torsion torsion is nothing but it is a twisting force it is a twisting force which is applied on a longitudinal body here we can see a shaft we are applying a twisting force here so what will happen the body will tend to rotate tend to rotate so that particular uh, twisting force is known as torsion and it will tend to produce a rotation in the body you may have uh, seen shafts shaft shaft is a machine element you may have seen that in pumps machines and all engines and all so these are the different types of shaft shaft is nothing but it is a body or it is a machine element which transfers the motion or the power from one point to the other point so if there is a machine part here then the shaft will uh, this shaft will have a twisting moment or a rotation and by the rotation of the shaft it will transfer the power from this end to the other end so shaft is a machine element which works on the principle of torsion and whenever we are providing a torsion torsion is a twisting moment uh, it is otherwise known as a rotating uh, a twisting force so when we are providing a twisting force means the shaft will have a rotation so you, you also know that when we are providing a rotational force it will form it will always form a couple so when it is a stationary object and we are providing a twisting moment it will form a couple now we are going to derive the equations for torsion and before that we have to for all, all derivations we have certain assumptions before that so for torsion equations we have assumptions the assumptions in the derivation of shear stress produced in a circular shaft subjected to a torsion so these are the assumptions the material of the shaft should be uniform it should be same the material of the shaft should be should have the same properties from one end to the other and it should twist along the shaft is uniform the twist which we are producing due to the force should be uniform throughout the shaft when we are giving the force here it should twist from this end to this end uniformly now the shaft is of uniform circular cross section the circular cross section or whatever the cross section is it should remain the same and cross section of the shaft which are plane before twist remain plane after the twist so if you are twisting it means its its position may change but the cross section should remain the same before and after twisting now all radii which are straight before twist remain straight after twist if it is a circular shaft we have a radius for that we are twisting that twisting will cause the dislocation of the body dislocation of the uh, particles in the body but it should not cause any difference in the radii in the radius of the shaft so these are the assumptions which we have to keep in mind before deriving the equation for torsion now we are going to derive the shear stress produced in a circular shaft subjected to torsion here you can see there is a shaft this is a fixed element and the end of the shaft is fixed to this particular element and this end is free and uh, here we can see a a dash we are applying a twisting moment so you know if you are applying a twisting moment it forms a couple so it is a couple and you can see here a and this is c so the a and c was the original position of the shaft now we are giving a twisting force here so what will happen the position will change from a to a dash the the point where a was there will be transferred to a dash so this can be taken as the deformation okay this can be taken as the deformation it is not deforming actually it is dislocating or dispositioning so we can take it as deformation because while applying a force if dislocation occurs that is also a deformation okay now the length of the shaft is l the phi is the angle which it makes with c c is the other end of the shaft phi is the angle which it makes with c when we are rotating it when we are twisting it and this uh, theta is the angle of this twist for the cross section so these are the things now we are assuming that t is the torque in newton mm l is the length of the shaft r is the radius of the circular shaft and tau is the shear stress induced at the surface c is the modulus of rigidity it is otherwise known as torsional rigidity of the shaft material so these are the things which we are assuming now the shear strain which is caused due to the twisting is equal to the deformation per unit length that you all know right change in length to the original length so here the change in length is nothing but it is a a dash 
from a it is dislocated to a dash so we can say that it is a a dash is the change in length the original length of the shaft is l so we are there is some change in length we are assuming it as a a dash okay so a a dash divided by l which is equal to tan phi since it is an angular dislocation we can explain the strain by tan phi also so a a dash by l is equal to tan phi which is equal to phi why because phi is very small we can take tan phi is equal to phi okay now if you are considering this circle a a dash is the arc of this particular circle an arc so length of an arc is nothing but it is r into theta r is the radius of the circle and theta is the uh, angle which it subtends subtends so a a dash is r theta so from this we will get an equation for phi from this also sorry from this we will get an equation for a a dash and from this we will get sorry phi and from this we will get a a dash so we are substituting in this equation the value for a a dash we are substituting you will get phi is equal to r theta by l now you know that if you are applying a shear stress we are applying a twisting force it will produce a shear stress and the strain which is caused by the shear stress will be equal to tau by c where c is the modulus of rigidity shear stress by shear strain is equal to modulus of rigidity so we can write that equation as phi is equal to tau by c if you are combining these two equations equation 1 and 2 you will get r theta by l is equal to tau by c which can be written as tau by r is equal to c theta by l this is very important this is an important equation which gives the shear stress of a shaft which is subjected to a torque now this tau is nothing but in this session we have assumed tau as the shear stress induced at the surface shear stress induced at the surface of the circle so we are providing the twisting moment at the surface so the maximum shear stress will occur at the surface now when we are coming inside the circle the shear stress will be lesser okay so tau is nothing but it is a maximum shear stress now we are taking a small section at somewhere at the center of the circle which is at a distance x from the Uh, outer surface so here here we are taking a section a circular section now x is the distance from the uh, center x is the distance from the center of the shaft to that particular section now the shear stress to the x will be equal to here we can say that tau by r r is the total radius of the circle and tau is the maximum stress at the radius r now tau x at x will be equal to tau by r is equal to c theta by a. you know because tau by r is equal to tau x by x that will be proportional so we can write the equation like this so this is the equation which we can use for uh, taking or for calculating the shear stress at any section inside the circular section of a shaft which is subjected to a torque now we have to know what is the strength of the shaft so whenever we are applying a force it will have a stress it will have a deformation at some point when the stress increases than the limit or the force increases than the limit it will get failed so what is strength strength means the opposing power or the maximum force it can bear so here what we are applying is a twisting force that is a torque so the strength of the shaft means the maximum torque or power it can transmit that is known as the strength of the shaft after the maximum strength what will happen it will get failed now here we are considering a circle circular cross section this is actually a shaft the cross section is taken here o is the center x is a uh, r is the radius of the per particular circle and we are taking a small ring which is having a thickness dx at a distance x from o now we are calculating the area of this particular ring we are taking a small section or ring and the area of the ring da is equal to 2 pi x into dx that you all know 2 pi r into dr so 2 pi x into dx we can take now the shear stress at this particular section we have already calculated it as tau x by x is equal to tau by r so from that tau x is equal to tau by r into x from the previous equation from this equation we have taken the value where tau is the maximum shear stress at the surface of the circle now turning force so here we have got the stress now force which causes the turning will be equal to stress into area you know that force is equal to stress into area so stress we got as tau x into dx and uh, stress into area 
area is dA, dA is equal to 2 pi x dx. So we are substituting these values here and you will get 2 pi tau by r into x square dx. Now this is the force. We have to know the turning moment. What is the turning moment? Turning moment is dt represented by the letter dt. Now moment is nothing but it is force into distance. Force is the turning force which we have for, uh, found here. Distance is nothing but it is x at the distance of x. So we are multiplying it with x you will get 2 pi tau by r into x cube into dx. So the turning moment at this section is 2 pi tau by r x cube into dx. Now we have to find the total torque. T torque is this turning moment is nothing but it is torque. Now the total torque we have to find. So we have found the torque at this section in this particular equation by using this particular equation. Now for the entire section it is nothing but we have to integrate the value from 0 to r. So we are integrating the above equation with respect to 0 to, uh, sorry from 0 to r limit and you will get the value pi by 16 tau d cube where d is the diameter of the circle. Okay. Tau is the maximum shear stress. So this is the maximum strength the shaft can withstand which is equal to the torque okay now this is about a solid shaft solid shaft means it is entirely uh, solid it have no holes in it now we are moving on to a hollow shaft hollow shaft strength is nothing but it is the maximum torque it can withstand so we, to find the maximum uh, torque what we have to do you have to uh, use the same equations same procedure which we have done earlier you have considered a circle a hollow circle here a hole is there the small radius is r and the small diameter is d now the large radius is capital R which is uh, the diameter is capital D. We are considering a small ring uh, in between which having a which is having a thickness of Tx and it, at, it is at a distance of x from the center. Now the area of the ring is 2 pi x dx. We have to find the shear stress. Shear stress is tau x is equal to tau into x by r as we have already said. Now force is equal to stress into area stress is tau x by r into area is dA. dA is nothing but it is 2 pi x into dx, the area of the string. So we have got 2 pi tau by r x square dx as the total turning force. Now the moment, turning moment, moment is nothing but force into distance. Force is this one, distance is x. So we are calculating it and we will get 2 pi tau by r into x cube dx. Now what do you have to do? You have to find the torque for the entire section. This is the torque for this particular ring. Now you have to find the torque for this entire section. So that is nothing but we have to integrate this equation. But here the limits will vary. In the earlier case since it was a solid shaft we have done from 0 to R. Here what you have to do? You have to 0 is not there. This is a hole. So from this point to this point you have to integrate. That is R small r to capital R. So we are integrating it. We will get pi by 16 tau into d raised to 4 minus small d raised to 4 by d where d is the capital D is the total diameter sorry diameter of the large circle small d is the diameter of the smaller circle and tau is the maximum stress at the surface. So this is the total strength a hollow shaft can withstand. Now we have to know how much is the power transmitted by a shaft. So we know the total torque. So if you know the total torque or total force now the force into distance will give you the work done. Okay, work done is equal to force into distance, the total work done per minute. So the total force is T. That is the average torque. Torque, you know, uh, it is not force, it is the torque into distance. So torque is there T. Work done is equal to the distance covered in how many number of revolutions. So since this is a circle, its total um, distance covered will be 2 pi n. 2 pi n 2 pi radian into n number of turns 2 pi is the total radius radian and n is the number of revolutions so 2 pi n which is equal to 2 pi n t the total work done now the total work done per minute was this one and total work done per second is equal to 2 pi n t by 60 kilo newton meter which is a unit now the total power transmitted is nothing but it is a work done in kilo newton meter per second so the same will be equal to the power transmitted which can be expressed in if it is kilo newton meter per second then then that unit is known as kilowatt so this is the total power transmitted by a shaft 
now we have to know another important thing of a shaft which is the polar moment of inertia so polar moment of inertia is a term which you will be uh, hearing now it is nothing but it is same as that of the moment of inertia moment of inertia means it is the um, what is that it is along the direction of the shaft now polar moment of inertia means it is perpendicular to the direction or axis of the shaft perpendicular the moment of inertia which we are seeing perpendicular to the direction or axis of the shaft that is known as polar moment of inertia with respect to an axis perpendicular to the plane of the figure that is known as polar moment of inertia and in a circular plane it is always the center so how to find this moment of inertia we have already seen the equation torsional equation that is tau by r is equal to c theta by l uh, and uh, we have also seen the torque equation for a shaft that is equal to pi by 16 tau d cube from this you will get the value of tau as 16 t pi d cube now we are substituting this value of tau in this equation so you will get you will do some calculations and you will get the final answer as t by pi by 32 d raised to 4 is equal to c theta by l here this pi by 32 d raised to 4 is nothing but it is j it is the polar moment of inertia so here you can relate it for a circle you have seen a circular section you have seen the moment of inertia about xx and yy axis that is nothing but pi by 64 d raised to 4 but to z z axis it was pi by 32 d raised to 4 so you got the difference z z axis is nothing but it is perpendicular to x and y so the perpendicular the moment of inertia along a perpendicular axis to the uh, axis of the figure is known as polar moment of inertia and for a circle it is pi by 32 d raised to 4 so it is represented by the letter j so this is the polar moment of inertia of a shaft now this equation so t by j is equal to c theta by l in the previous case we have found tau by r is equal to c theta by l so relating these two you can combine and you can write tau by r is equal to t by j is equal to c theta by l which is same as our bending moment equation m by i is equal to sigma by y is equal to you have already seen that equation so it is similar this this is the torsional equation that was the bending moment equation they have they can relate we can relate that so in that sigma by r was there sigma by y was there sigma is nothing but it was bending stress so instead of sigma here it is uh, shear stress and sigma by y was there y is the distance to the center of gravity here r is that r is the radius of the circle now sigma by y is equal to um, what was that uh, m by i m is nothing but moment bending moment here t is the torque that is the twisting moment and i is the moment of i was the moment of inertia instead of that we got j here that is polar moment of inertia so these two have a relation now the important things to be noted is for a hollow shaft you have seen this equation for a solid shaft now for hollow shaft the polar moment of inertia is nothing but it is pi by 32 into d raised to 4 minus small d raised to 4 where d is the inner diameter of the shaft now we have seen a quantity known as section modulus in the bending moment equation that is i by y that was i by y so uh, in this torsional case also we have a section modulus that is otherwise known as polar modulus torsional section modulus or polar modulus so we can write the same equation here i instead of i we are putting j that is this is moment of inertia and this is polar moment of inertia y instead of i we are putting r so j by r is the section modulus for torsion that is polar modulus now the polar modulus for a solid shaft it is pi by 16 d raised to 3 you know how to find the polar modulus section modulus we are finding it by i by y moment of inertia divided by y y is nothing but it is d by 2 here also r is nothing but d by 2 so we are putting polar moment of inertia divided by r that is d by 2 you will get pi by 16 d cube for a hollow shaft it is pi by 16 d into d raised to 4 minus d raised to 4 you will get so this is about the section thank you